If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Tuesday, October 22nd, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Today in the Finis Monitor, we'll be joined by Lisa Dahl. She's the head coach of the Central Area Aquatic Team and in the middle of creating champion swimmers. She's also a world record holding master swimmer. And joining us now via Skype from Seattle is Lisa Dahl. Lisa, it's good to see you. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you so, so much. So how are things going in Seattle? Things are going really well. We have um, a, a large swim team of kids ready to swim and wanting to pursue their dr dream in swimming. Well, you've been the head coach of Central Aquatic Team, Central Area Aquatic Team since 2010. How has the team grown since you became head coach? Well, we were a small team, a mostly recreational and fitness team of less than 80, and we are now over 200. We have um, some are going to junior nationals this year. We've had kids ten in the country, and we're we're swimming fast, having a lot of fun, and uh, growing very quickly. What was the the impetus that got these kids from being rec swimmers to now qualifying for junior nationals? You know, putting a sense of um, purpose behind their swimming and opening up ideas that they could possibly swim fast and, and achieve achieve big goals in swimming. So they really didn't know what swimming was about prior to me getting there and just giving them a dream, giving them something that they could believe in and uh, and want to pursue. And then and teaching them how to work hard, that was a big deal because they had learned a different approach to swimming, more of just coming in when you want to and you know maybe getting a little tired. And after they've had a... They've had the opportunity to get in the water and really work hard and then achieve the results from that, that working. That, that has opened up just huge opportunities for them that they're, they're now pursuing and coming in every day to achieve. Well, it sounds like you, you enjoyed this challenge instead of coming in and saying, oh my goodness, how am I going to get these kids from, kids from point A to point B? I, yeah, I love a challenge. Um, now, I met you at the diversity conference at the, at the Aquatic Sports Convention in California last month. Uh, it was very interesting to talk to you and, and, and um, learn more about your program. Uh, in terms of diversity, how, how, how diverse is your team as far as ethnic background? Um, not a diverse enough, but we've certainly made big um, gains in that area. We are trying to create opportunities for access into competitive swimming, and I found through my, my personal experience when I brought, um, I adopted two children of um, Hopi Indian culture, that, that swimming is really under, underrepresented in, in many cultures. So I've brought my passion to um, access, creating access in swimming. So when I came to Central Area on purpose, because that's where um, a large uh, culture is of diversity, um, I wanted to create some kind of access. So we have programs in, in within the swim team that is generating that opportunity. So we, we're, we're moving in that direction. I'd say our younger kids, 10 and unders, were, were more um, diverse. Our older kids, not as much, but we're, we're certainly gaining in that, in that area. So you, you actually put yourself in the middle of the place where you actually want to bring these kids in. I think a lot of the teams that say they want to be more diverse, they seem to be you know, in the suburbs and, and finding a challenge of getting these inner city kids to go out to the suburbs to go swim with them. So you're actually in the heart of Seattle, in the inner city area, and, and kind of seeing these kids every day on the street. Correct. So I put myself there on purpose. That's, that's where they are. We've... Um, are making um, really nice inroads in, in certain um, very diverse um, populations. It's really fun, and and then they're coming and they they spread the word and want other kids in their um, communities to to what their kids are. 
Tell us about some of the things that you've been doing specifically to entice some of these kids to come in and swim for Central Area, or at least at least know more about the sport. So every summer um, we run what's called Get Wet. This is a I came up with just something that would hopefully would entice kids just to come in the water and get wet. And we started it um, three years ago, where it's free to anybody who walks in the door. And they need to have some ability to swim, although we do. Um, at times we'll give swimming lessons, um, but it's, it's, it's to specifically generate access from kids from swimming lessons or who are playing the pool onto a competitive swim team. And it, we run it for three weeks. It's coached by my coaches, my assistant coaches. Um, Central Area Aquatics team pays for the pool time and pays the coaches to do this. We, the first year we had um, 40 kids walking in off the street for our competitively coached practice. The, the year after, we had probably 50, and this year we've had 60. And it's just purely word of mouth. We don't advertise it in any way. And they come in, and they, they get wet. They have fun. And through that, we really target and ask and recruit those kids to come on our swim team. On average, how, what's the percent of the kids who participate in the Get Wet program that actually become part of Central Area Aquatic Team? Um, we have anywhere from – our biggest year was 15 – um, this year is 10, and the year before that, I believe, was 7. What our limitation becomes is, is money. So we have um, Central Air Aquatics team has a yearly fundraiser. 100% of the proceeds of that goes to creating financial assistance for these kids. Um, it's those limitations oftentimes that we would bring more in if we had more money. Um, but we are very aggressive. I've, we've championed um, $1,000 this year. $49,000 last year, and I think $23,000 the year before. So in three years, we have $130,000 available to bring kids into the water. It's substantial, and yet it, the need is greater than we actually have money for. Well, I'm sure it is. So obviously it is, it is important to know that money is kind of a big factor in, in these kids deciding if they want to be a part of the sport. What other challenge do, challenges do either the swimmers or the parents say that is keeping them from... Mm -hmm continuing on in the sport? Um, transportation, communication. We, um, oftentimes there, um, there's a language, there's just constant obstacles. We, we provide swimsuits, the equipment they need to swim. We provide, we try to, we try to break those obstacles down and we don't know it always know what they are until they happen. Um, so it's just it, every day there's something new, and just trying to keep the communication open, keep them in the swimming pool, and generally the ones that are there that that have made it through the year, they can help the next um, group come in and 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 help them with their obstacles. So we're we're constantly figuring out what the new one is. Well, in the middle of all this, being a full-time coach and and trying to get more kids in the sport, you're a full-time master swimmer, masters water polo player. How do you fit it all in? Wow, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm really struggling. I find that my own personal training time has taken a back seat to this. In, in my passion to um, diverse, diversify swimming the best that I can. And it, ha it certainly has taken a back seat. I have not experienced the levels of swimming I have for about a year. Well, the sport is always going to be there for you. So, you know, once, once you get to your goals, I'm sure you can always come back to it. it right. You've, you've had a lot of success, as I said. You've broken world records. You, you swam the Olympic trials in 1980. You've had a lot of success in the sport. So I would imagine for you, it's, it's t riding a bike puts it mildly. I'm sure you could just dive right back in and, not, and leave off, right, uh, continue right where you left off. That's the plan, and, and we hope. I, I try to get training in. Um, ideally, um, I was training about three hours to four hours, four times a week. Um, I'm lucky to get two hours in about three days a week. So it's, it's really changed, and, and I'm okay with that. And if I have to take some more time off, I will. I'll be all right. I'll, I'll come back. I'll be swimming when, I was nine, when I'm 90. I tease my swimmers that you know, they'll be swimming masters and helping me under the blocks when I'm 90. <laughs> Do any of your swimmers goad you into racing them? Oh, that, yes, yeah. And what's fun is that for when I first started the team, I was faster than all of them. And, um, and, and celebrate. Every time one of them gets faster than me, we celebrate that. So that's been a lot of fun. Yeah, well, that's probably a nice little goal for these kids to have so they can beat their coach. <laughs> yes. 
Well, speaking of a swimmer who, you know, has really reached a lot of heights um, that you had a hand in, in, uh, in coaching through his young career was Anthony Irvin. I understand you were his age group coach before he became Olympic champion. Tell us what it was like working with him. Well, he was uh, 9, 10, and 11 at the time. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Very, very talented um, young swimmer. And had he, he was a very fun athlete to teach because his athleticism, he could incorporate anything you, you know, taught him very quickly. And, um, and he was, you know, he was, he was a normal 9, 10, 11 year old boy who was screwing around and got a lot of push ups in those days. Um, but I was very fond of him and, and was actually a little bit part of him coming back into swimming because in uh, <clears throat> 2009, I sought him out and found him through Master Swimming and brought him out to the central area uh, this, uh, this summer of 2009 to do a, a clinic for kids in the community. And it was a huge success. And uh, so shortly after that, he got back into swimming. So I'm, I'm really proud of that. And we've, we've maintained a relationship. And I was there with when he made um, the Olympic team last year and uh, had a wonderful experience around that with him as well. So he's a very, very special young man in my life. Well, I think you need to, to tell that to your kids, you know, these, especially because, you know, Anthony is, is one of those stories of, you know, just finding such a great niche in the sport. And, and um, you know, you got to be able, these kids obviously probably know who Anthony is. I'm sure you probably have mentioned him yes. a couple of times. Of course. <laughs> well, uh, Lisa, it's a great program that you're doing. And I think it's, it's obviously it's small steps to the bigger the bigger goal so I'm sure you, you've realized that and I'm sure you're very happy with what you're doing right now very happy and, and really proud of of the the thing that we have created we have created access we are having results and there's just these amazing faces in the water every day that you know I come in and, and they they run to me and say coach Lisa coach Lisa and I get hugs and there it's just it's an amazing gift that I've that I've been given well, before we let you go on the morning swim show today, we're going to submit you to our final five. These are five questions we ask all of our guests on the show to get to know them a little bit better. Uh, so the first question is, uh, this kind of dives into your master swimming um, background. If you could change the order of the strokes in the individual medley, how would you change it? Hmm. 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 I don't think I would change it. I, I like it the way it is. I think you're the first person to say they wouldn't change it. <laughs> Good. Um, what's a career other than swim coach that you would like to try? Uh, um, I would love to be a motivational speaker for young people. Um, that's a dream of mine. Okay. What's a career you would not like to try? Um, anything that's behind a desk. Okay. Uh, if you could change or add any of the rules in the swimming rule book, what would it be? <laughs> uh, then we put... 50s back in on every every level of swimming and um, just get those 50s back in okay. please <laughs> and the last question where do you like to go most for vacation probably Hawaii although Italy I went to Italy last year for world championships and, and that is a new favorite I loved Italy well I can't argue with Hawaii or Italy <laughs> All right, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. Again, congratulations on all the success you're joining in, at Central Area, and we look forward to catching up with you soon. Thanks, Jeff. And that will wrap it up for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. We're glad you tuned in. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.